Hello everyone and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today I want to share with you one of my favorite jig setups for installing your castle nut, receiver extension, or buffer tube assembly. One of the biggest challenges that people face when they're working on their low receiver, doing their build work, or they're changing up parts back here, is when they tighten the castle nut, and this particular example actually has the issue. This is not a functional issue, so if you have a canted or a clocked receiver extension that's kicked off to one side or the other, it's not going to cause the gun not to work. But it's a cosmetic issue, so what I do is I'll put a Geisley reaction block on the lower receiver. I'll tighten the screws, and then I look down the back, and I use this and the pistol grip as an indicator of whether or not that receiver extension is straight. All right, we have to come straight down the back of it, and let me look. And if you look, this receiver extension is clocked that way. All right, so if you look, this thing is actually kicking more this way. All right. Now the reason that happens is there are several techniques. One of my favorite jigs used to be um, the one that's made by Present Arms. It's a polymer uh, plate that you lay on your workbench and it has various fixtures for it for working on the upper receiver, lower receiver, etc. But what's neat about it is that you would put the lower receiver into the fixture sort of like this, put a plate over your buffer tube, a piece would go in your magwell, and then you would tighten your castle nut and it would prevent, in most cases, the receiver extension or buffer tube from clocking when you're tightening. And the reason this happens, when you're tightening this castle nut here, this thing wants to walk one way or the other. There's always a little bit of slop in the buffer tube before you tighten that castle nut. That's the factory built lower. So again, this is not a shot at the manufacturer here, but it is slightly off. And again, it will not cause a function issue. And it's really hard to see for most people, but if you look at the top here, or this portion here, it's kicked off to the side that way, just a little bit. So what I want to show you is not that we're going to take this apart and do anything to it because it's a problem. It's not. I just want to show you the jig. And I like to show you how sometimes things can be off and you don't even realize it. So this is a lock and hold or a pivot lock. What you'll do is you'll put this in the lower receiver. Now these aren't cheap. These run $80, but they're well worth it. What you'll do is you'll tighten these two screws here, and it actually has a setup where it expands into the magwell. So once you tighten these down, rock solid. It's not going to move. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the Geisley reaction block on the lower receiver. Tighten these three screws down. Now, these aren't cheap now either. These used to be $100, now they're $200. So I'm not sure why the cost doubled, but they're extremely expensive now. Now, one problem, let's move it over. I have two vices, and you can use really cheap vices to do this. These are Irwin, um, let's see, I'm sorry, Yoast 445 vices. You can get these for about $60 to $70. So... All three of these things here are not really cheap. You can get cheaper vices to do the same thing, but what you need to do to make this setup work, I'm gonna go over here and get this pipe. Now, this is actually an armor's tool. But essentially, when you're setting the vices up initially, you need to make sure they're perfectly in line to one another. So before I tighten down the bolts for the bench, I put this armor's tool in here, I snug them both down, and then I tighten the bolts down. That way these things are both in line with one another. Once I know that they were in line, now these are set. I don't have to keep doing that. Just wanted to show you in the video. I'm going to take this. I'm going to grab this here. And then now look, if I try to tighten this, but we have a problem. This here is thinner than the pivot lock. So what I did was I measured the thickness of this and this, and 
then figured out what thickness shim I would need to make this part equal to the mag or pivot lock. So if I were to take two of these, and these are 3 sixteenths, I stamped them on there so you guys can see in the video, so I can remember in the future. If you were to take one of these and lay it here, and one and lay it on the other side, it would be equal thickness to this. We don't need it on both sides though. We only need it on one side. I got this at the hardware store. Um, I had to buy like a three foot section of it though, but it was only like $8. But just a piece of steel. We're going to sit it on this side here. Gonna make sure that we have our spacer in properly. And then we're gonna tighten the front down. Now this thing is one rigid unit. So when I put my castle nut tool on here and I go to tighten, and I'm not adding any force here because this is staked beautifully, I'm not gonna break that. But it'll prevent this from clocking. We've used this in two separate classes now on top of the ones that I've messed with. And this is the most foolproof method that I've used. Now again, not that cheap. There are lots of other methods. You can use just a reaction block and you can hold the pistol grip in one single vice while you're tightening it. You can use a mag block and you can try to do the same thing, try to prevent things from torquing and twisting and canting. Um, lots of different ways to do it. But this is the most foolproof way that I found. Um, the gunner's mount was my preferred method up until this, but the gunner's mount, since it's made of uh, a polymer or a plastic, it can give when you reach your proper torque value of 38 to 42 foot-pounds here. So this is the most foolproof way. Rock solid, rock solid, two very solid vices mounted sturdily to my bench. I can pick up the bench and this thing still won't move. So I wanted to share that little setup with you. Like I said, Geisley reaction block. This is the lock and hold pivot lock, and then a piece of 3 16 shim material. And you'll have perfect timing of your buffer tube every time. Hope you found this video educational, and thanks for watching.